This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of techno lust. Merry Christmas! Oh, that's right! Today is Christmas, isn't it? Christmas but Eve. Christmas Eve. Today yep. is. If you're watching this on the 24th, in which case, uh, Merry Christmas to you, if that's what you celebrate. Otherwise, um, switch case, or break, or continue. Depends on your choice. Uh, otherwise, if you're watching this in the future, good for you. How's the future doing? Hey, cheers to you on an awesome and crazy entire 2014. It has been a wild ride, and I'm very excited about lots of new projects that we have. I am too. Geared up for 2015. I don't I'm even very know excited. if you know about the... Um, the, oh, you're gonna love what? the robot platform. I haven't oh, even. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a thing on this way. And mm -hmm. um, I'm, did you I'm notice aware. the giant box over there? What now? The huge 3D printer over there. Oh yes. Dave you got a 3D printer? Dave Randolph Yay! and I have been conspiring, and I feel like I'm so good excited. stuff will come of this. Oh my gosh, that's yes. gonna be fun. Because. Currently, you are in the midst of a <laughs> microcontroller series. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, see what I did there? <laughs> so resistance <laughs> is futile. <laughs> Unless you purchase the correct resistor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, Aaron Penn, as well as many others on YouTube, pointed out, I think you should use a series of resistors on that LED. That was from your segment from two weeks ago. Ah, but actually, I was following a um, tutorial written by Massimo Banzi himself, the one of the creators of Arduino, and he did not use a resistor in his tutorial. The thing is, like, the LED is rated at between, what was it, like 3.6 and mm -hmm. 5 volts? So I'm like, ah, it's well within the limits. That's why those limits are there, but, you know, I don't want to, th this is why you're doing that and <laughs> not me, because It depends I'll just on the like LED that you're using, because LEDs are at different voltages, depending on which ones you buy. I have popped a fair share of LEDs in my day. I love mm -hmm. it when they just, they get this, like, really bright for just a moment, and then the magic smoke is gone. Well, the one I was using was the correct voltage, so okay. that's good. <laughs> well, um, we have a, a very exciting show for you guys. I have been fighting with the server behind me right now. So I'm actually looking forward to uh, recommendations on new servers because it's time to build. Th did you realize this is an i5? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, I didn't know it's that. It's a wee bit old. Yeah. And I'm thinking. Well, so is my home computer. I, I think I should do a build on the show of my new gaming rig. I would like to see a gaming rig build. I would also like to do a new virtualization server build yeah. because uh, this is just going to be one node of many in the cluster of hopefully many clusters in the <laughs> data center and we're going to get into those different resource pools and things of that nature here soon because I have been geeking out with Overt uh, while at the same time fighting with CentOS and this <laughs> piece of hardware here. Um, so this bare metal notwithstanding, stay tuned for good stuff on that front in a bit. And with that, we should probably get right into, let's not resist jumping into this segment. <laughs> and with that, You're I'm going to... You're such dorks. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll be back. I'll see you in a bit. All right, cool. Bye. <laughs> so this week, I am checking out Ohm's Law and calculating resistors and trying to figure out what the best resistor is for my breadboard and for all the different circuitry that I decide to create. So first off, I should probably explain this thing called Ohm's Law. Ohm. It comes from George Ohm, who is a scientist who defined resistance by calculating voltage in amps. So this is calculated, this is the fun math part, V equals I times R, where V is the voltage in volts, of course, I would be the current in amps, and R is the resistance. So R is where the little resistors come in, in ohms. So first, if one volt was calculated, then that would be one amp times one ohm. So there's a lot of different kind of imagery for Ohm's law. For example, a lot of people use the water tank imagery. Um, but this is basically how I understand it, and hopefully I explain it in a pretty good way. So the voltage is the amount of electric current that's being held inside of a circuit, no matter what that thing is, that, that piece of circuitry. Ohm is the resistance, which is the narrowness of a channel where the electricity is going to be flowing through. So for example, it could be like a bunch of traffic cones that are cutting off a lane of traffic. It's going to create some traffic back up behind it because it's, it's narrowing that area where the traffic can go through, so the electricity can actually go through. The flow, or the speed, or the current, or however you want to say that, of the electricity ends up being the amp. So if the resistance goes up in size, as in more lanes end up being cut off, 
then the amp speed goes down because it becomes slower. It's just like traffic. So now we can use this math to create future currents. So for example, if you have a 12 volt battery, like a, just a random little battery that you buy at Target or something, and then you have an LED with like a 22 milliamp current, then you would do this math. You would divide 12 volts divided by 0 0.022 amps. So that would be 22 milliamps, 0 0.022 equals how many ohms? Well, that would end up being, and I could just calculate it out on my little calculator right here. So let's see, 12 divided by 0 0.022 amps. So it would be 545 ohms. So at that point, I would know that I would need to have a resistor with 545 ohms or higher of resistance. Now, 545 is not necessarily a uh, usual amount that you would find in a resistor, so I would probably have to go up a little bit higher than that, like to the 560 or whatever the next ohm size would be. Now you can find a whole bunch of different packs of resistors. I was shopping on Amazon and I'll show you what I found. Uh, I just looked for resistors and I found tons and tons of packs and these come with like hundreds. Uh, the Spark 1-1 is a good example. If I click on this, so it's only 12 bucks on Prime. If I scroll down a little bit, it shows you all the different common ones that it comes with. So these huge packs are super, super cheap. They usually have several different values in a pack. Common ones that you can usually find, you might find one that's 0 ohms, 1.5, 4.7, 10, uh, 22 ohms, all the way up to 100, 330, 470, 680. So 680 would probably be the one that I would need for that calculation, but that's kind of high, so I could also just add up two of them. Uh, one kilo ohm, you could also get like 47 kilo ohms, 100 kilo ohms, 220, 330, 470, and one mega ohm, because there are things called mega ohms. Now, if you need a specific resistance, you can either just buy one that is available to you, but if it's not available, you can also stack them up together in a series. So say I needed one that was 220 ohms and then another one that was only 10. So it would add up to be 230 ohms altogether in that series. Pretty cool, right? I know, yay, some math, because who would have thought I'd be doing math after college? <sighs> Now, resistance is measured in ohms. This is a unit from the International System of Units. Ohms are usually spelled out in thousands, such as 1,000 ohms, that would be one kilo ohm, or three million ohms, that would be three mega ohms. So that's how you can kind of remember it. Now, resistors have a never changing electrical resistance. So if you buy one that's one kilo ohm, it's always gonna be kilo ohm, one kilo ohm. The resistor's res resistance limits the flow of electrons through a current. They're only going to consume power, they can't actually create it, so they're called passive components for any kind of circuitry that you build. Resistors are usually added to any kind of circuit where they're going to end up complementing active components, and these could be like microcontrollers or ICs or op amps or whatever you might have. And commonly used resistors are going to be used to limit the current, they can divide voltages, and they can also pull up I.O. lines. And more on that later once we get into those kind of things. Uh, resistors are also shown as little squigglies or little rectangles whenever you see them on a schematic. I'm sure you've probably ran across some schematics. I just Googled it real quick to show you some examples of what it looks like. And we have tons and tons of examples on here. So a resistor is gonna show up like a little squiggly, up and down like this, or you might see it like a little rectangle, like this with a couple of two little lines coming out of it. So that's pretty easy to understand. Yay. And they'll usually be called something like R and then a number next to it. And that's gonna be the name of it. And then under that, you'll see the value in ohms, like one kilo ohm, for example. Now choosing a resistor is so, so important. There are several, several different types. They vary in value, they vary in size, and look. The first ones that we have are through hole resistors. Now these are the, like the ones that I have, which look like this. They're little long pieces of cord or long pieces of wire with a little strange little bullet thing in the middle of it. It's kind of weird looking, but that's basically what it looks like. They have very, very long leads that you can cut shorter of if you need to. You can solder them to different places or you can just stick them in a breadboard and you can bend them around too. So I could just bend these if I wanted to and they create a nice little angle if I need it to look like that for whatever I'm creating. The axial package, that's this little plastic piece on the middle, that's the plastic part. The bigger ones like this are going to be one half of a watt 
and then smaller ones, you'll find some that are a little bit smaller than this too, they're one fourth of a watt. Now that wattage is called a power rating, and a power rating tells you uh, what rate the electric current is actually turned into something else. So, a really good example of this is a light bulb. Say it's like a 75 watt light bulb. So it's turning electricity into light at 75 watts. With resistors, the electricity is turned into heat. So, if you have too much heat going to a component, you end up getting fire. And that's not good. So we don't want fire, we want to make sure that we're resisting the calculated perfect amount that we need for whatever we're building. So, you need to calculate the power rating. It's not necessarily obvious from the size all the time, but if you can't find it listed or if you can't figure it out from the actual size, you can take P, which is the power, equals I, which is the amps or the current, times the resistance. And you already know the resistance because if you buy these, they're going to be labeled. At least I sure hope they're going to be labeled. Now there is another ki kind of resistor as well. This one's called surface mount. That's the other kind. They're just basically little tiny black rectangles that have a little bit of silver soldered points at their edges. They're more commonly used in mass production where a robot's gonna do all the work because they're so tiny, I don't think necessarily we wouldn't wanna do all that work because they're itty, itty, itty bitty. Now resistors are also made up of carbon, metal, or metal oxide film. If we stripped off the outside of a resistor, you would see that the carbon film is wrapped around an insulator. So it's wrapped around again and again and again all through the inside of this little teeny tiny piece of circuitry. The more wraps that you get, the more resistance it has. Ha! Huh. So very easy way to see how much resistance is going on in there. Now color coding. This is the last thing I wanted to talk about. This is a color coding graph, if I hold it the right way. It's very hard to see on the camera, I know, but I'll take a picture of it so you can see everything that's going on on here. But this basically matches the resistance and the tolerance of the resistor. If you put one of these next to one of your resistors, like my big pack of resistors here, you'll notice that there's little lines, little markings on the resistor. A good resistor pack is going to come with some kind of color code graph for all those different bands of colors that you see on your resistor. Like mine has up to five bands on a blue resistor, and then it also came with some of these little yellow ones as well, and those come with, I believe, four bands? Yeah, four bands on them. So I had two separate kinds that came in the pack that I purchased on Amazon.com. Now the first three in mine are going to be the first three values. So if it's a 330 ohm resistor, then the first three values should match up, match up to the correct color codes for these. So it would be orange for three, orange for three, and then black for zero. Yeah, three, three, zero. Orange, orange, zero. So those would be my first three bands. And then the fourth would be the multiplier, and lastly would be the tolerance. So tolerance is either plus or minus a percentage, and it's usually like 1%, 2%, 5%, 10%, something like that. Because no resistor is going to be made absolutely perfectly, they might be off by a little bit of an ohm. So keep that in mind whenever you're building your different parts. So after the tolerance, you then want to multiply them by your multiplier. So this is the fourth band that we discussed. So you want to match the first three bands and then multiply by whatever the multiplier ends up being, depending on the color of that fourth band. So for example, if I had one that was brown, according to my graph, brown would be a uh, power of two. So it would have two extra zeros. So as a reminder, if you have 10 to a power of two, that means you add two zeros. So it would be 330 extra zero, extra zero. And if you have something like 10 to the power of seven on your graph, then that would mean you add seven zeros to the end. So a nice easy way to memorize that little bit of math. Yay, powers. Now surface mount resistors, they use a different kind of code. So there's tons of information about that online, but since we're not going to be using a lot of surface mount resistors, I decided not to go into that. And we'll also discuss a lot about parallel resistors and resistor networks later on as we build more complicated like robots and things like that as well. So I hope that this explanation uh, helps you understand resistors. It definitely taught me a ton about these. I also got a couple of questions from people about which kits I decided to buy when I started building all my different things. So I'll show you what those look like. I got two. They're not from Arduino, but they're made by this company called Sunfounder. There's a smaller one and a larger one. I got both of these on Amazon. 
and I'll point them out to you. Uh, they were only about like 30 and 50 bucks or something like that, but they come with all the different components that you would need to start building your own little kits. It also came with a nice little project book, so it's very easy to understand what is going on with each thing. So the bottom one, the smaller one, was this one that came with a bunch of LEDs and teeny tiny breadboard. I also got this large one, this bigger kit. And that one came with a very big breadboard, extra USB cord, a nice little LCD monitor. Yay, I'm super excited to use that. Even a fan, I don't know, maybe uh, I guess I'll build a fan. But you can find a ton of other Arduino kits as well on Amazon. Uh, I'll link to those in the show notes as well with my little Amazon Associates code. Thank you for the support. <laughs> and hopefully you can find a kit that will help you with um, all the different things that we're going to be building on the show. So email me, feedback at hack5.org. Again, let me know what you want to see me build on the show as I'm learning more about all the different components that go into building prototypes, because this is really, really fun, and I can't wait to share it all with you. Coming up, we'll have more fun times with Darren, but first, let's take a quick break. Doesn't matter whether you're into, huh? Or, ah, uh, when you get that killer idea, you need to grab yourself some domain name hosting website stuff fast. And you can do that over at domain.com because they've got a domain discovery system where you can put your idea into the universe. And it'll come back at you with amazing stuff. And you can say, hey, that's stuff I want. And when you want it, you can have it really quickly because their checkout process will have your website up and running in no time. It's like, ba boom, and then boom, websites. Domain.com, they're affordable, reliable, easy to use. But most of all, they're crazy on social media. So you can tweet them at domain.com and say, what is wrong? with Hack5 and they will tweet back at you and say, yeah, we know, that's why we hooked them up with the coupon code HAK5 so that you guys can use it and get 15% off at domain.com when you think of those crazy ideas. And that's what you do because of the bloop bloop -de blues and the bloop bloop -de -do doos So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Last week's trivia question was, what widely used and influential programming language was developed by Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson at AT&T Bell Labs in early 70s? And the answer is C. That's it. Just the letter C. This week's trivia question is, what multipurpose compiled language, designed in 1983, was super, super popular in the 90s and has influenced several other languages? You can answer that over at hak5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies. Good luck. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5, but before we get going, we've got some special announcements. In fact, if you are in the San Francisco Bay Area and like getting your LAN party gaming on, we are having a very special LAN party here at the warehouse, and you guys are invited to bring in 2015 with a bang. Bang from redeemers and flat cannons. It's going to be great because Ooh. the theme of this LAN party is... Deathmatch? Uh, well, nothing before 2005. Huh? <laughs> uh, they're all going to be like 10-year-old plus yes. games. It's going to be exciting. So break out your Counter-Strike source and get oh. your uh, Unreal Tournament on and maybe a little oh Quake 3 God. action. Yes, Serious Quake Sam, that's on the list. A little StarCraft. It's going to be awesome. It's, I'm, uh, I'm an Unreal Tournament person. Yeah? I was really, really good with the crossbow. Crossbow? Yeah. There's a crossbow in UT? Yes. Well, not in, in Deathmatch. Not in UT 99. Oh, maybe not. 2004, I think it is. Uh, see, I never played UT 2004. Oh, in fact, see, I, I preferred it. UT 2003, but that's only because I love the maps and I used to run them and I would know like exactly when Wait, to pick up the Mega Health. Wait, is it 2003? Yeah, there was two of them. It was because of a... Um, licensing dispute that they ended up being like one right after another in the years. Hey, did you oh, know okay. that um, th that 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 game is made by Epic? You know what else Epic made? Yes, it was 2004. That's the Tim one I Sweeney. Okay. <laughs> Actually, the other way around. Tim Sweeney made e Epic and not the other way around. Although one could argue. Anyway, <laughs> check out ZZT. <laughs> I'll leave it at Yay! that. We'll do some more with that later. Yep, so we're going to play some awesome, super fun times at the LAN party. Hack5.org slash LAN party to reserve yourself a seat if they are all taken. My apologies. Um, sign up sooner next time. <laughs> Hey. You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, okay, we need to one, buy a bigger switch, two, get more tables and chairs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we'll see how this first one goes. Email us feedback at hack5.org with your thoughts, your comments, and what you want to see this next year. Yes, as well as if you have server recommendations, I am looking for doing this on the cheap, aka bringing back the ultimate $1,000 uh, virtualization node of doom. Cool. Yes, okay. should be good. And uh, support us on Hackshop. 
that's where you can make this happen directly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you to everybody who decided to purchase from us through the holidays. It was we busy had some and we great really deals and yeah, stuff. It yeah. It was awesome. Awesome deals and I we really you got appreciate what you it. Yay. <laughs> I know, in fact, I just got off the phone with uh, Lynn talking about her son, John, and she, her son was so excited Shh, to get- it's Christmas Eve. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. John, I'm sorry, I guess you know what's under the tree now. No, stop. Messed that one up. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> and, okay, there's, anyway, whatever, so. Um, <laughs> We should end the show. We really it's should. the end of the year. <laughs> Nobody watches the show anyway at the end of the year. No one's watching in December <laughs> with all of that hot dinner kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your tech and lust. Bye. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Sorry, Happy John. Chanukah. That just about wraps up this week. Yes. All the resistors. All the voltages, all the watts. Well, well, there you go. I haven't been able to speak today, <laughs> so I'm just gonna do it in Simlish. <laughs> 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 like, really, like, sorry, kid. By the way, Santa Claus. Shalu.